Sullivan Rand here playing Farming Simulator 22 on Prairie Farms, Michigan. And this episode, we're going to pick up where we left off from planting here last episode. Uh, I did run the planter out of seed here last episode, so we're up by the silos. We need to uh, fill the planter back up here again. But before we do that, everyone, I want to head over to our hay field here. Uh, between episodes, I did finish, uh, let's see what's here, uh, tedding, raking, and baling, and picking up the bales here on this field. And I will have to say, I was slightly surprised, Evan. We did not get that many bales off this field. Um, I basically had enough bales to fill up one barn, and that was it. So, and then you see, I think, uh, was it this one? Not sure if these are the used ones, or there's a uh, the few bales that were left I put in the other barn here. So this might be the one that has the few left, or that's the one that used them all. I'm not sure, because I'm not seeing any. Oh, you know what? There's the one that had the most, Evan. So I brought uh, that stack over to that one, and then those are the six bales I had left. I just kind of tried to put them on the barns that needed the hay the most, I thought. Speaking of hay, looks like this one needs some straw. Did I not uh, bring any straw over to this one? Okay, well, I'll try to remember to do that here in between episodes. I don't want to bore you folks too much with the, uh, the animals here, but looks like I need to bring some straw to that one, because I thought I brought straw to all these. I must have missed those poor cows. <laughs> well, anyway... Yeah, there's the, uh, there's the truck right there. We'll get some here at some point. Maybe if we get time, this episode will do it. Otherwise, uh, what I do want to do here this episode before we start planting, though, is grab our slurry spreader here. And I want to get the uh, slurry application going on that field so we have some more fertilizer on it. And we'll do that here with the uh, slurry here, hopefully. Should have more than enough here at this point to uh, do that field, I think. I'm guessing uh, on the last field we did have one, we probably used somewhere in the neighborhood of 600,000 liters. Uh, just, just roughly guessing anyway, so. Yeah, I'll probably just uh, set this up with a course play here. So, course play. Let's uh, see what's what we got here. So let's get rid of the course that's currently on there. Load up another course. Uh, let's try with one headland here. That should uh, minimize the amount of missing spots. I don't know if I dare do sharp with this one, so we'll just uh, leave it at the normal. Yeah, we could try it once, see what's what happens. Worst case, we'll just uh, regenerate the course, I guess. So let's uh, generate that course, see what's what we end up with here. Yeah, move that over here just a little bit. And first waypoint, and yeah, we'll let him drive the course. Okay, we'll see what's how old that goes. I mean, like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if we have to redo that, maybe with the more of a smooth corners, but we'll just keep an eye on it. So let's head back to our planner here after I go back to the right screen so I can actually select the tractor, of course. Oh, come on now. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can fill this planner back up here. We were able to uh, successfully fill both planners here last time, so... Let's hope for the same luck here this time as well. Excellent. Uh, oh, oops. And see, I was into the pole there. Busy opening the covers so I could fill up the back. There we go. As I've uh, said before, I mean, it's always been a bit of a problem sometimes trying to fill up a planter that takes both seed and fertilizer from this uh, silo system. Unfortunately, uh, Giants uh, still does not quite seem to grasp the concept of a piece of equipment that can hold multiple fill types being filled from something that can fill multiple fill types, if that makes sense to you folks. Yeah, Giants doesn't quite grasp that one, unfortunately. It's been a problem here in, you know, 17, 19. I don't know if it was a problem in 15. I don't think that was really a problem back in 15 that I remember. But uh, Farming Simulator 17, Farming Simulator 19, and obviously carries on to 22 here. Uh, yep, oh well. I think this is where we left off yet. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, we'll find out once we get over here. Uh, between episodes, I did finish planting, or I should say course play, finished planting the soybeans. So that field is done. And let's see, we're at 1,400 hours. So I don't know how many hours it took. Let's just say it took a long, long time to plant that field. Oh my goodness, that one. Uh, and again, the uh, the planter here, this is no small planter, everyone, but it definitely took a while, so. Speaking of which, are you folding out? Ah, oh, there it goes. Okay, well, that's folding out. Let's get the uh, GPS going here. So I want a uh, zero degree line. Auto with that. Get that rehomed on the tractor. 
yeah, that should be pretty close, I think, hopefully. Okay, and I think we're ready to start uh, rolling here. Notice the uh, the rows don't quite line up with the planter anymore. The, the texture on the ground and the rows on the... Yeah, oh well. I kind of figured at some point it'd be come more and more off. Maybe by the time we get to like Farming Simulator 2032 or something like that, we can actually have rows that actually line up with the row units on the planter. That'd be cool, but yeah, on that. At least uh, now Giants does give us, you know, like row crop planting texture, right? I mean, that at least is good compared to, uh, you know, previous versions where all the planted texture all look the same, regardless of what you're planting, which just, I don't know, always seems silly to me, but. And let's see. We not need G our course play open, so let's close course play. Nice to see, too, by the way, having that uh, the planter held more fertilizer than it did seed, so I didn't have to fill up the fertilizer here first, kind of like that. Uh, at least that's always my preference. Anyway, I like to see it when the fertilizer lasts longer than the seed does. And, of course, I mean, that might have flip-flopped if we had not already put some fertilizer down here on this field. Although, you know, if you look at the map, I mean, it really doesn't look like we put that much, but... This field must have really been that depleted. Uh, something I can maybe try to remember, too, is maybe next time around, I'm going to have to try to, like, increase the amount, which I think you can do with the uh, spreader. I'm not entirely sure on that. It's not something I've really done yet, but I think we can adjust the application rate, if I remember correctly. And corn, of course, that is one of those crops that takes, uh, yeah, a fair amount of nitrogen here in the game. And for that matter, in real life as well. I don't know why we're getting a little bit of a dark spot going on there. Not sure what's up with that. But, oh, and I did plant, uh, as you can tell, probably two headlands around this field. That one, oh, it's interesting. The nitrogen is pretty much the same across all these fields. Well, okay, it looks a little lighter there, maybe. What is our soil type here, by the way? Okay, so loam. Then we got the sandy loam. Clay, huh? Interesting. So we are variable rate applying our fertilizer and our variable rate applying our seed here as well. That's all thanks to the uh, Precision Farming Mod, of course, by the way. Which uh, is a free... I don't know if it's considered a DLC or really a mod here for the game. Either one. I want, I guess technically more of a DLC, right? But at least it is a free DLC here for the game. It definitely changes up the uh, game mechanics as far as fertilizer, lime, all that good stuff is concerned. Though technically, I mean, if you think about the lime, the lime is still really the same. It's usually about every third harvest you still need to lime your field. So, yeah, you can see the right now one, but it, it, it's still pretty much every third time when you need to align it. Uh, fertilizer, now you can apply it all in one application. Uh, it's obviously going to take a fair amount, but you can apply it now in one application at the time of planting. Now, before I went without the Precision Farming DLC, you'd always have to try to get two applications of fertilizer. So either, you know, one before planting or two before, depending on what kind of planter you're using, right? But if you have a planter that puts down fertilizer... I'll set back up here again in a minute. Uh, if you have a planter that puts down fertilizer, you can either get one application before planting or one application after planting. And, uh, yeah, that would give you your two applications of fertilizer, right? Which, uh, oh, that's what I was going to say. Usually it always becomes a little bit problematic sometimes I'm trying to get two applications of fertilizer because you can't just uh, stack your fertilizer on the field. Uh, the game will not just let you do, like, two passes of fertilizer at the same time. You need to have something in between your fertilizer applications. Uh, if it's something as simple as a lime, 
you know, application or cultivation, you know, you, you need to have something in between your fertilizer applications, right? So precision farming never kind of takes care of that problem, so to speak. You can just apply it all at once at the time of plant, at least if your planter is or has fertilizer on it, right? Oh, something fun about just uh, going up and down the field, everyone. Planting. Yep. Good stuff, everyone. Look at that uh, beautiful John Deere 9470RX. Actually, I think isn't... Um, i trying to think now. Is Larson Farms, is that a 9420RX or 9470RX? Hmm. I'd like to say it was a 9420RX, but I could be wrong in those numbers. I mean, don't quote me. Which, uh, again, by the way, if you're maybe uh, new to this uh, series here or running on Prairie Farms, Michigan, uh, as far as equipment went, I went, I decided to go with Larson Farms equipment here on this map. I wasn't sure what equipment to get on here, and I was thinking about it. I mean, you know what? Let's uh, just go match one of the, uh, the farmers out there in real life and just uh, try to get as close as we can to their real-life equipment. And given the uh, size of the fields on this map, I figured Larson Farms is probably a pretty, one, pretty good one to go after here. Now, if we're playing on, uh, say, like a 16x map or something like that, everyone, then we might want to go for more like a Mike Mitchell setup. For those of you familiar with Mike Mitchell on YouTube, his setup might be more appropriate for like a 16x, uh, 16x farm there. I'm not even entirely sure how many uh, combines uh, Mike Mitchell and his. Uh, I guess family's operation, I believe, is what it is. However many they run all together. That is definitely a big, big farming setup up there in uh, Canada. For those of you who watch the, uh, the Mike Mitchell on YouTube there, if you're not, highly recommend uh, checking them out. If folks want to see the uh, big equipment, that is definitely yeah, the place to go. He uses the big stuff, shall we say, just because, yeah, they farm. I think I remember he said before, again, uh, roughly how many acres, but I don't recall what it was. Again, I mean, all I know is it is a lot, a lot of acres. This is the uh, John Deere 1775 NT planner here. By the way, 24 rows of planting goodness here. Reminder, by the way, and if you haven't already uh, subscribed to the channel, make sure you click that uh, subscribe button. Always very much uh, appreciated. And, of course, once you are subscribed, make sure you click on that bell notification there as well. And then once you are subscribed down below in the uh, description, if you'd like to follow me on the rest of my social media channels as well, but, uh, you can find links for them down below as well. Facebook, Instagram, all that uh, good stuff. Plus, if you'd like to catch some more RDL on content, uh, you can follow myself over on Twitch. Again, that's Artie Allen on Twitch. If you can like to follow over there, that way you get notified when I do go live, which, of course, has not been uh, that much here this week. Uh, wife has had surgery here, so kind of been busy uh, taking care of her a little bit. Hopefully a little bit later this week here, or maybe even uh, by the time you folks watch this episode, maybe we'll uh, get a live stream squeezed in here at some point. And we'll see what we got for some uh, comments here a moment as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Stunt 22 was saying that the NT also stands for Narrow Travel. And, yeah, this is the NT-style planner here, of course, by the way. Uh, for those of you familiar with John Deere's equipment, this is not the only 24-row planner John Deere has. Or maybe I should uh, rephrase that. This is not the only... 
row crop toolbar that uh, John Deere has. I believe the NT, uh, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong on this, the NT can come in several different uh, planter row configurations, uh, spacing, all that good stuff. So you can get, get like a 15. Well, I don't know. Can you get a 15? I think you can get 15 with this. Maybe, or is it 20? Hmm. That's actually a good question. I'm not sure now. Uh, someone will have to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm pretty sure you can get like either 15 or 20 row uh, set up here on the NT style. Of course, uh, 15, I mean, that's probably going to be more prominently used for uh, soybeans where you're planting the soybeans a little bit closer together. Uh, corn, for those you don't know, likes to be planted on roughly 30 inch rows. I know there's some farmers out there that experiment with those at 20 or 22, somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, like 20 inch wide rows, so 20 inch between the rows. As far as I know, there's not much advantage to that. The, the yields on the field sounds like they're still about the same. I'm not sure really what that advantage is. You know, 50, or 20 inch versus 30 inch. But this uh, planter here is probably set up for uh, 30 inch, I presume. Which uh, works for soybeans, I mean, but then soybeans, they can take advantage of being planted just a little bit uh, closer together. So sometimes that's why you'll have uh, you know, a 30 inch space planter with middle rows as well, essentially. So on 15 inch centers. And then sometimes what you can do is just lock. So if you're planting corn, I mean, obviously you don't want to be planting those on 15. So you just lock every other one up. So you're just planting on 30 inch rows. Hopefully that uh, makes sense. But anyway, also then John Deere also has the DB style frame. And of course, one of the differences with the DB style frame is the tires. So the tires that are in between the rows here, they're out in front. So still about the same location. They'll just be out in front of the toolbar as opposed to behind the toolbar. And then with the uh, DB style frame, that also goes all the way up to a massive 48 row unit. And when I say 48, I'm talking 48 30 inch space rows here. I believe they also have a, oh, is it a 47? Or no, actually, I think it's a 54. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's like a 54 inch space or yeah, 54 row unit. But that's actually a narrower width overall than the 48 row 30 inch spaced. I think the 54 is like on 20 inch spacing or something like that, if I remember correctly. Again, I mean, there's all kinds of different uh, ways you can essentially set these uh, planners up for uh, depending on the application you're trying to do here, right? I don't believe I've ever heard of a uh, one of the larger toolbars. So it's like the DB120. Uh, so for the DB120 is your 48 inch, or 48 row, 30 inch spaced planner. Get all the numbers right here. I don't believe they do like a 20 or 15 inch spacing on that one that I know of, at least not that I've ever seen. I've seen maybe one in the future they will. Although when you're pulling a planner that big oven, typically you're pulling that with like a four track or a four wheel drive tractor, uh, the, the big four wheel drive tractors, of course. And you're pulling that with, you know, four or 500 horsepower, probably. You do occasionally see them being pulled by the larger, uh, you know, like 8R sized tractors, but again, typically it's your, your big tractors, like your 9Rs that are pulling the 48 row planters. Yeah, those are big DB120, 120 inch. No, 120 planner. Oh, a lot of numbers though. A lot of numbers. This uh, planner here would be uh, comparable to a DB60, which is 60 feet. Also the same, you know, still 24 rows. Okay, as far as comment, actually, it looks like that's all the comment. Really? Okay. I thought, oh, you know what? Uh, I was going to say, I know there's more comments. There we go. The only reason I know this is because I responded to the comments, and uh, because I responded, it hides them. So that's what happened. Okay, Christopher was saying a good video. Thank you very much for that. Uh, David here was saying he lost his uh, save game. 
and he was saying thanks on showing us how to restore your save game. So yeah, that's a good point to bring up for those who don't know. Uh, in Farming Simulator here, there is an option to restore your save game, although you have to do it manually, unfortunately. Uh, I, I still don't understand everyone why Giants doesn't build some sort of option into the game for like automatically restoring your backup if uh, you know, something goes wrong. But uh, for those of you who don't know, Giants automatically creates a save game backup every so often. So every time you save the game, it also creates a save game backup. And then it uh, stores those backups. It only keeps, I think it's like 10 of them or so. So it keeps a couple of the most recent ones. And then, of course, as you get further and further back, it kind of, you know, doesn't keep quite as many. But if you go to your farming simulator folder in your documents, I wouldn't, at least if you installed it the default way, normally the way it is, uh, in your documents, my game farming simulator folder, and you'll find a save games backup folder. Or if something goes wrong with your save game, or there's something maybe happened, you know, you were terraforming your farm and uh, something goes horribly wrong, which has definitely happened. I'm, I'm definitely, you no, know, I'm not probably the only one that's had uh, something go wrong when you're trying to do some terraforming. You accidentally put something wrong, and uh, oh boy, you're better off just like, uh, yeah, just, just exit the game, don't save that, right? Hate it when that happens, by the way. But that is an option to uh, kind of get that back as well if uh, something goes horribly wrong. Uh, I will have to say the one caveat with that one, if you're doing a save game backup, make sure it's not a mod problem first. Mods tend to cause probably, I would say, 75 to, uh, but even go 90, might even go 90% of the problems with a game usually. Game crashes and such. Uh, Nightwolf Gaming was saying, I've noticed that those planters, uh, talking about these planters right here, the NT1775, have a wandering problem. Ah, great. Uh, then I replied back to Nightwolf on that one. It's like, well, great. That'll go well with our Ripper. That also has the wandering problem. That's the, if that's the 2720, yeah, I think it's the 2720, if I remember correctly, has that wandering problem. If you put it down somewhere on the map, everyone, you better uh, better tie it down, because if you don't, <laughs> who knows where we'll end up. Oh, down to 36% on the seed there. I mean, need some more seed here fairly soon. We're making pretty good progress. At least we're not having to fill up super often here. Oop, there we go. Get back on the map here a minute. Yeah, I would say we're probably over half planted here at this point, everyone. Uh, now we got the really long rows we're going to start planting here now. Forget if I mentioned it here already, but I did plant two headlands all the way around the outside edge of this field. Speaking of headlands, by the way. That reminds me, I should go check and see what's how our slurry spreader's doing. Oh, okay, let's go check and see what's how he's doing over here. Is he, uh, I think he's finished. Wow, okay, cool. So that actually worked then. Let's go check uh, the nitrogen map here a minute, make sure everything looks good. I guess. So, it looks a little strange right there. I, it must be a soil type. Okay. Just uh, just weird having to see such a stark contrast there with that. That's Okay, cool. I guess it worked. And looks like, uh, from what I'm seeing on this data, it looks like a variable rate applied it based on the areas. Because, again, yeah, we do have that uh, sensor that is on this uh, particular spreader here. Everyone? That was one reason I wanted to go with this uh, particular spreader. Again, this is the uh, Precision Farming DLC Slurry Spreader. And it has this uh, little manure sensing John Deere box on it. At least I think it's John Deere box, if I remember correctly. I think that's what they called it, wasn't it? Oh, let's go check here a minute. I thought I remember something about being a John Deere here on that one. There's our slurry tankers. Let's see, where's the Precision Farming DLC one? I didn't even realize there was one with the uh, Precision Farming DLC until I was looking through this. Like, wait a minute, Precision Farming? Yep, there we go. So, Precision Farming DLC. And then we have, yep. Okay, John Deere Manure Sensing. I was going to say, I thought it was John Deere something. I'm surprised I don't see the logo splashed all over it. Like, John Deere, you feeling okay? Couldn't there be like uh, big John Deere logos just like splashed all over that thing? I don't know. I guess not. So I better uh, call John Deere up and ask him about that one. He'll have that uh, fixed post haste.
Okay, we'll leave that there for the moment. Ooh, you know what? That reminds me too of one. Uh, something else we need, actually need to do. Field 9, we need to spray that for weeds and or... Ah, uh, we'll probably just spray it. That'll probably be the quickest thing. I said we could roll it too, but... Or not roll... Well, actually, you know what? That's right. I do actually want to roll it. That is a good point. I want to roll it and spray it. Okay. Uh, before we get back to planting here then real quick, let's get some equipment going on that one. So I want the roller, which is over there somewhere. And I also want the sprayer, which that might be over here too, maybe? What I've got here at the moment, I'm I got the John Deere sprayer set up with fertilizer. And then I've got our other sprayer here, the Hardy sprayer set up with pesticide. Or no, herbicide. Yeah. Uh, pesticide, by the way, of course, first part of the name kind of gives it away. It's for pests. I wonder how long before they uh, integrate that in the game. Get the pesticide, herbicide, fungicide. Yeah, the game definitely makes... Uh, that part of the game here really simple in some terms, I mean, because in real life there's a lot going on when it comes to uh, spraying a lot more than just killing weeds usually. There's a lot of uh, chemistry, I guess you could say, that's uh, being done when it comes to uh, spraying your crops. We can spray crops here, by the way. I forgot. Yeah, that's right. Huh. Horse like horse on this? Yes, there is. I wonder if we ran out of spray and I just never noticed it. Would have thought I would have noticed that though, but maybe not. But I see it is empty. Might just uh, run back over to field seven here. I want to see if we can finish uh, spraying that. Unfortunately, the crops have started coming up here already. So uh, we are going to, my understanding, take a hit on yield as a result of that. Uh, if you don't want to take a hit on your yield, that one, you need to spray the field before the crops start to come up. So essentially a pre-emergence application, although that's not really what it's called in the game. Uh, real life, that's what it would be considered, though. You spray it before your crops come up. Hopefully uh, you'll get right on top of those weeds, right? So we'll get this uh, going over there here a minute, then we'll come back, we'll grab a roller. We'll set up a course by course here for a roller on field nine there. Oh, this might not be the one that had... Oh, shoot. Okay, I was hoping this would be the uh, course that was loaded on this tractor. And last, it is not, is it? Okay. I don't know if it's safe doing sharp or not. We'll, we'll see what's what happens here. I wonder if I could tell. No, it looks like we had for sure two headlamps. Let me uh get back in here again. Let's switch that to at least two headlamps here. Yeah, so yeah, he's gonna go the opposite direction, isn't he? Bummer. Let's hope the course will be about the same. Up, oh, I guess worst case, I'm we'll just uh, set it up to hopefully start. Nice thing having the course bay lines now show up in the mini map here, so you can actually get a fairly good idea where the lines are and line it up. Exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, yes, you can see the weeds in there. Just a little bit different color green. So we're going to start nearest waypoint. And I guess he'll just uh, work his way across the field the opposite direction of the previous course. Oh, well, is what it is. Like I said, definitely want to kill these weeds, though. And then let's head back over here, grab a roller. That is not a roller. Oh, it's a tractor that can pull a roller, though. Oh, uh, yeah, no, let's not disconnect it at that point. There we go. I was going to try to back that thing back in there and realign it. Oh, boy. Especially doing that with a quad track. I don't know if that makes that better or worse, of it, but it's, it's definitely not easy. Okay, we'll get rid of the course that's currently on there. We definitely won't be doing sharp corners here with this one. If I remember correctly, that does not end well. So we're just going to roll it. And, and again, when, as I've said many times before, the, the rolling really is not worth it. But RDL, why are you rolling then? 
that is actually a very good question. I, mean, I, I really don't know. Um, it's just something to do on the field. Plus, uh, as I said, when I started this series, I mean, one of my goals was to just uh, see what's, how over the top overkill we can go as far as like uh, improving the yields on our crops here in the game. There's only so much you can really do, I think, but... Okay, number of headlands. Let's at least do two here. Oh, it is set on sharp. Let's not do sharp. Visually, doesn't look like it actually changed anything. This means now that uh, the tractor will just go around the corners, basically go round the corners rather than stopping backing into the corner and trying to get every last little bit, which is nice. Except when it doesn't work, which I don't think it'll work with this one, so. Okay, and I was going to say we'll get back to planting everyone, but it is time to wrap it up here this episode. So on that note, uh, if you folks have any comments or questions, be sure to uh, leave them down below. And as always, Evan, thanks for watching, and until next time.